What's going on guys, Mickle here. Today I have a special video for you. It's gonna be a blockchain for beginners video. I'm gonna cover the three most important cryptos you need to understand to get a good footing in the space. I'm gonna explain it in my own words, make it super easy to understand. This is gonna be a video you could send your mom, your dad, or anyone you wanna get started on the track to learning this information. Guys, make sure if this video is helpful, you like it down below, you subscribe to the channel, and you comment to let me know what you think. Guys, I really enjoy making these videos. All the attention you guys can give it will help promote it in the YouTube algorithm. So thank you so much, and let's jump right into this video. Alrighty, well let's start this off with this cool graphic I'm showing you right now. This graphic is actually showing a cryptocurrency called XRP being transacted around the world live instantaneously. And we're gonna get into more, more about XRP later in the video, but I think this is a really cool graphic and shows you how powerful cryptocurrency is. These payments are moving instantaneously all over the world 24 seven, and that is not something you could do today with the current, current banking infrastructure. Make sure you guys stick around to the end of the video to learn more about XRP, but to start this video, we need to start from the beginning. So one of the first cryptocurrencies, the one that everyone, almost everyone in this world has heard of is Bitcoin. Bitcoin was actually invented in 2008 as a result of the financial crisis and really what it was meant to do was to be a form of currency that could not be manipulated by the powers that be, banks, central banks, government. Um, when Bitcoin first hit the market, it was trading for fractions of a penny and now is trading at around uh, 60K. Essentially, this is a logarithmic chart of the entire history of the Bitcoin price. And we can see if we zoom out and put it on a linear scale, then we can see that the price is absolutely gone, gone parabolic. But what makes Bitcoin so important and why is everyone today in our world talking about Bitcoin? Well, the most important thing to understand about Bitcoin is the idea of decentralization. If you, when you have a centralized network, you have one centralized party that controls the entire thing. That's the current thing we have with almost every monetary system in the world, whether it's the US dollar, the European dollar, or any other kind of dollar, essentially there's one party in control. What this essentially means is that they have the power to change the rules whenever they want. When you have a decentralized network, then there's no central party that controls everything. Every party has an equal say on the system, and that makes it extremely powerful in terms of trust. Everyone has the same level of trust in the system, and overall it makes for a more fair and more distributed uh, system overall. Our current uh, monetary system in the US is a centralized system, but Bitcoin is a decentralized system. One of the thing, the reason Bitcoin is a decentralized system is it's essentially a computer cut into a whole bunch of tiny little pieces and every one of these uh, t computers contributes a tiny bit to the computing power of the Bitcoin blockchain. If you've ever heard of miners, anyone in the entire world can become a miner. And all these miners work together to build the Bitcoin network. And essentially, it's just a bunch of computers working together to create a system that transacts, transacts value all across the world. It's so much more secure than a centralized system like we currently have, because in a centralized system, only one central body needs to be corrupted, hacked, or compromised for the system to go down. In a distributed system, you have a whole bunch of different parties all working together, and therefore you have to take down a whole bunch of different smaller parts to destroy the system. That's why in Bitcoin's entire history, there's never been a hack or anything like it. The reason why um, Bitcoin is a thing and you need Bitcoin to run this decentralized network is because in order to have all these smaller parties working together and to make the uh, network work, you need to reward them. In the Bitcoin system, you are rewarded for Bitcoin for essentially helping create this, helping to create the super secure network. And overall, the premise of Bitcoin is essentially just a reward for creating one of the most decentralized forms of computing power that has ever existed. So let's keep going. I ho hopefully that wasn't too much. I tried to explain it in a kind of easy way. So 
One of the most important parts about Bitcoin is the fact that back when Bitcoin was created, the uh, creator of Bitcoin, Satoshi Nakamoto, who is an anonymous person or group of people, decided there would only ever be 21 million Bitcoin ever created. And in order to earn some of these 21 million uh, Bitcoin, you would essentially, like I said before, help contribute your computer to a network that helped decentralize this protocol that allows value to move like information does on the internet today. Um, one of the most important things about blockchain is that it's actually a native currency for the internet. Think about how we have banks today. If you want to send money to, from your account to say someone in your family's account, even though you're on in the same bank on the same system, it might take a couple hours to a day to get there. And that's because your banks and all those phone applications you use are internet applications, but built on a legacy old fashioned financial system that was created before the internet. What Bitcoin did was it flipped this on its head. It created a monetary system built into the internet. And that's what really makes Bitcoin so powerful. And that's why I can send a Bitcoin anywhere in the entire world. And it would only take about 15 minutes to get there. And I could send billions and billions of dollars for fractions of a cent. Bitcoin is really a was the precursor to a, a, a monetary system built directly into the internet, one that every person on the internet had an equal say in, and one that could not be um, destroyed by a centralized party. One of the most important facts that uh, to only 21 million Bitcoin uh, will ever exist, it's, is that it's a form of currency with no inflation. One of the um, biggest problems in uh, in today's world in the US monetary system is that essentially whenever the US government or any other government in the world needs money, they just print more of it and then use that money. Well, the cause of this is the pur purchasing power of the dollar has been inflated away and your money in your pocket 10 years ago is worth significantly more than the money you own today because the value of the dollar is essentially plummeting. Um, the main reason that Bitcoin solves this is because there's no centralized party that can decide to create more Bitcoin. The total amount of Bitcoin ever created is locked in code and will never be changed. Therefore, every person who's on the network can see what the total supply of Bitcoin is, can be sure that that will never change because it's coded into the system and therefore have trust in the system just like everyone else on the system can also trust it. Another important thing that Bitcoin solved, and this has to do with um, being programmed directly into the internet itself, is it allows you to send value from one person to another without a intermediary. So if I wanted to send money to someone across the world, it would need to go through multiple banks to get there because like I said earlier, you essentially had the internet built on top of a legacy banking system. Like I also said earlier, Bitcoin flipped this on its head and built a monetary system directly into the internet. So just like I could send an email or a text message to someone across the world, Bitcoin allows you to send value across the world. Um, with that being said, that's a general wrap up of Bitcoin. Um, there's a lot more to Bitcoin, but that's really what you need to understand to move on to the next part. So the next part is Ethereum. What you need to understand is Bitcoin was a prototype of cryptocurrency. It was the first one ever created and it solved some massive problems. It was the first decentralized monetary private network that essentially could be governed by the people and it was money without a centralized authority. It was money that anyone could contribute to, it was money that anyone can use and it did not require a centralized party to record what happened on the network. Bitcoin was transformational and led to a form of currency native to the internet that did not rely on trusting a third party. Next comes Ethereum though. Ethereum in many ways is very similar to um, Bitcoin uh, with all the stuff we mentioned. And like I said, this is not gonna be a technical video. We're gonna keep it simple, but something added to Ethereum that really made it unique was something called smart contracts. And let's jump into that and we're gonna explain it very simply, so don't worry. Smart contracts are essentially a way to program the money. So for example, Bitcoin, it's a very, very primitive, simple blockchain. You can send value back and forth, but there's not much more you can do, do than that. What Ethereum added was a whole nother layer. It allowed the money to be programmed. 
A smart contract is a contract in code that executes as long as a certain amount of parameters are met. So let me give you an example. If I wanted to buy a house, right, and say that house cost $50,000, well, currently in the current financial system, we would have to get a person in the middle to essentially say, watch me give you $50,000. And then when you get the $50,000, uh, you hand over a deed. Well, what a smart contract would do is essentially, as soon as you got the $50,000, the deed would automatically be sent over to me. And thus our transaction would be completed with zero intermediary intermediaries in the middle. So it's essentially trustless transactions and programmable money. And this idea could be compounded hundreds and thousands of different ways. You could add smart contracts on top of smart contracts that create entire financial systems and that's called DeFi. That allows people to lend out their assets, lock them in contracts while your assets are being lended out, you generate yield and then these assets are put into different places. So Ethereum really allows for programmable money and allows for a decentralized financial system to essentially be built. Another very interesting uh, thing about Ethereum is that because of its ability to be programmable money, you can actually build different applications on top of Ethereum. A very simple way I like to explain to people what Ethereum is, I say it's like Bitcoin in that it's decentralized, it's internet money, but it's also kind of like an app store. You can customize it, make it anything you want, you can build new applications on it, and really it can be used in a whole bunch of different ways. Well. Because Ethereum uh, does all that, it actually slows down uh, the speed of the Ether token and makes it slightly expensive to use. This is mostly just because it's, uh, it's once again like Bitcoin, an older blockchain, but it causes it not necessarily to be great for used in money transactions. Bitcoin is a lot cheaper to use and therefore Ethereum's main application has really been for development. It's really the standard for building new ideas and issuing different kinds of currencies. It's also important to note that the supply of Ether is not capped and is constantly growing, but has slowly decreased uh, in the amount of Ethereum issued because of different changes to the protocol that eventually has essentially slowed down the issuance of new ether. It's predicted that this number will eventually flatline and actually start decreasing. A reason it's decreased is every single time a smart contract is executed on Ethereum, a small amount of Ethereum is actually burned and disappears from the ecosystem. This could one day make Ethereum actually a deflationary currency. And the main thing you need to take away from Ethereum is really that it's a programmable form of money that different applications can can be built on. It's really the standard for building in the crypto universe and is really uh, has been the epicenter for thousands of new projects being created. The last token I really want to get into is XRP. XRP is personally one of my favorites. While I do own all of these, XRP does take a special place in my heart because it's really the easiest one to understand. Essentially what XRP is looking to do is be a bridge currency for the world. So what does that mean? Well, XRP it was actually made by a very similar group of people who created Bitcoin. And what they wanted to do was create a Bitcoin that worked better. One of the biggest problems with Bitcoin is it takes a long time to actually settle. Now your typical bank takes two days to settle, Bitcoin takes 60 minutes, but XRP can actually settle in around four seconds. XRP is also much more scalable. And if you see right here, just comparing these little pyramids, you can see that way more transactions can be done per second on uh, XRP than you could on Ethereum or Bitcoin. I'm gonna explain this in a very uh, low level way, but really the main reason is this, is because XRP doesn't use miners, and therefore less energy is used, making it more efficient. Another reason is is because Ethereum is heavily bogged down by its smart contracts. While this allowed a massive amount of development to be done on the network, it made it not as scalable for payments itself. XRP is really the standard for sending instantaneous payments, and in my opinion, is the closest thing we've seen to a super efficient, highly liquid form of money directly built into the internet. Something very interesting about XRP also is that there's actually a massive company called Ripple Labs that uses XRP to facilitate cross-border payments. What they do is allow a bank to take a form of currency, 
instantly swap it into XRP, send that XRP anywhere in the world, and then and then transfer it back to the native uh, the currency of the native country that XRP was sent to. And if we look back at this uh, globe right here, that's exactly what's going on. Uh, and of yeah, oh wow. So if you see right here, transactions are flowing all over the world, and what we're watching is the live flow of XRP from country to country. You can see how fast these transactions move, and it's really a space age form of the internet that allows value to flow like information does today. If we look at the number of banks in the world, and this was last updated in 2019, we can see that a large amount of banks have already transferred over to the Ripple standard. In my opinion, uh, XRP and Ripple will be the standard for payments in a future financial system. Ethereum will be uh, a form, a, a segment of a decentralized uh, financial system that thousands, hundreds of thousands of applications are built on, and just like. Um, just like businesses come out every day, I think a lot of new crypto applications will be built directly uh, on Ethereum. Bitcoin is really digital gold. It's really a store of value that everyone has trust in that will never go away and essentially will always have the first mover advantage. People like holding Bitcoin because it's safe, it's been around forever, is a great store of value and cannot be manipulated by a third party. Overall, I hope this video got, this video helped you a lot. It really went over the basic forms of cryptocurrency. In my opinion, the three most important ones, they all have very distinct use cases, and I hope this video helped you understand the difference between each one of them, how all of them can play a very important part in a future, future financial system, and what their role might be in a future where cryptocurrencies are more widely adopted. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. <laughs> Make sure if you enjoyed it, you like it down below. You subscribe to the channel, but for now, Mikkel out.